Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game King Domino by Blue Orange Games and its expansion, King Domino Age of Giants, which can be attached with King Domino or Queen Domino. In the game King Domino, you will play two to four players, roughly will take about 15 to 20 minutes to play, and it is for ages eight and up. And in the game, you are a king, or if you're playing Queen Domino, a queen, attempting to build your kingdom. With the expansion, giants are gonna come and try and destroy your kingdom, and you'll be uh, placing them and moving them around on the board to kind of devastate your opponent's boards. Your objective in this game is to gather tiles from a little uh, tile tower here, flip them out, and then utilize them to basically place down onto your kingdom. And you'll be trying to score points by connecting like type tiles forests with forests, islands with islands, and caves with caves, so on and so forth. With the expansion, you're going to be introducing unique uh, end of game scoring objectives, the large giant meeples, and of course additional tiles in the game that will allow you to place down and move the giants. At the end of the game, when you've created a 5x5 five five or a 7x7 seven seven grid, you will score up all of the points that you have accumulated on your kingdom, and the player with the most points is the winner. Pretty straightforward, let's go ahead and explain how it's played and I'll show you the setup. So when picking up the game King Domino, you're going to be getting a stack of tiles that have numbers on them. I believe it's about one to 50. You're also going to be getting a castle, a wild starting tile, and two kings that you'll use for placement when gathering tiles. When you gather the expansion, the Age of Giants, you're going to be getting additional tiles marked A through F, and you'll also be getting tiles from 50 to I believe about 56, 12 new tiles to insert into the game, and you're also going to be getting six new giant meeples that are gonna come onto your player board or your kingdom, and of course, hopefully be able to move them off because they're nasty. Additionally, in the expansion, you'll get a fifth player, which is going to include two additional kings, an additional colored um, starter tile, and of course, the castle. And you're going to be getting these tiles here. These are objective tiles, which basically will allow you to shuffle them, deal out two, and place them down, and you'll use them for additional end of game scoring points. The final thing in the expansion is going to come with this rule book, or I mean, I should say scoring track, and this tower, which is excellent for use when pulling out tiles to begin the game. So let's talk about how to begin the game. Uh, when you're playing a two, three, or four player uh, game, it will determine how many tiles you're, play you're gonna place, and of course, if you'd like to play variants, there is the five by five grid and the seven by seven grid that you can make when building your kingdom. I'll just show you the basic idea of the game though. With a two player game, you're going to be getting a, a character, um, and I'm gonna be playing with yellow over here with the castle and the wild tile, and then green over here with the same things needed. I'll set the scoring tile aside, shuffle up these objectives and pull out two. Uh, one of them is going to be scoring five points for every wasteland adjacent to your main wild uh, space or square. And another one is if I can make a full five by five grid or seven by seven grid, depending on the game variant I am playing, I'll score an additional five points. You won't need the rest of these unless you're choosing to play another game after this, so you can go ahead and set them aside. You also will not be needing any additional characters or tiles. You can set those along with any rules aside as well. And then you're going to go ahead and place all the tiles into this little stand here. And it'll tell you in the rules how many you need, depending on the number of players and how many come out. In this example, for a two player game, you're going to take out five tiles from the bottom here. And you'll literally, literally just pull them out from the bottom here and then place them down in numerical order. Letters will start on top and then the numbers will be next from one all the way to, I believe about 56. Organize them from high, lowest to highest and then you're going to flip them. So I have a 29, 37, 41, 42, and a 50 four and then you're going to flip them over with five tiles for a two-player game. In the two-player game, you're also going to go ahead and remove one of the tiles. And the one you're always going to be removing is the middle tile of the five. So you should get the first two and the last two. The middle one will get removed from the game. You can go ahead and discard that tile. And then you'll have the four tiles you're going to be starting the game off with, these guys here. Players are then gonna go back and forth, and one way you can do it to determine who goes first is you'll take both of the meeples, shuffle them up, choose one of them, and that is the player who will start the game off, which is going to be green. They'll place their meeple on any of the four tiles. The next player will do the same, and you'll go back and forth until the entire set of four tiles has been selected. After that happens, you're going to pull out five more tiles here, and you're gonna place them down in order. I'll move all these guys here, and I'll place them. There's a B, 23, 32, 36, and a 40. Then remove the middle one, 
And then you're going to have a new set of tiles and you go ahead and flip these over so that the players can see what, uh, what the tiles are going to be next. After that, then the play will start from the top tile going to the bottom and players will take two actions. The first action is to take their meeple off, take the tile, and then place it on their player board. You must match like with like uh, tiles, at least one every time you place one. But when you're playing with the middle, it can it's a while and it counts as anything. So I can go ahead and place one of these guys just like that or just like this. The other rule is that you must also make a 5x5 five five grid. So you can't go 6 horizontally or vertically when playing the 5x5 five five variant. After you do so, then you're going to go ahead and take your meeple and place it on any of the other four. And then the next turn will go. And in this case, green selected the next one. So green will move this one off here and place it so that it is connecting. And I'm going to go ahead and connect two greens together. And of course, to the wild, which is fine. And then I'm going to go ahead and move and select a new space. And then yellow will do the same thing here. Place, take off and place. This one goes here and then this one goes here. After that is done, these are the new tiles, and you're then gonna go ahead and pull out five more tiles from this little castle here, and you're going to go ahead and rinse and repeat the process. Uh, the game will end depending on the variant you're playing or the type of game or whether you're playing with the expansion or not, based on when all the tiles run out, when somebody is making the five by five or seven by seven grid, and then you're going to score. And scoring is very simple. You will take the tiles and you will look at them, and you're going to match all of the colors together. So if I have four greens here, uh, that is four tiles. And then you're going to multiply them by the amount of crowns on each of the green tiles that touch. So if I have four green tiles and I have one of them that has a crown, that's four times one, which is four points. If one of them had a crown and another had a crown and I had four tiles, that would be four times two, which would be eight points. Uh, then that's pretty much how you're scoring the entire board here. It's pretty simple. Uh, additionally, uh, there's going to be giants that come onto the field, uh, and there's also going to be uh, giants that are moving. Uh, there's going to be the number, uh, the letter tiles, and those ones will have a giant on them. Whenever you take or place one of those guys down, you will also have to take a giant and place it on one of your crowns, which will basically remove a point for each area that you place a giant on. And whenever you place a foot uh, tile, you can take a giant from your area and give it to another player for them to place on their area. Thusly, it reduces the amount of points that they have in the game. So if they had something like a two by two, which is uh, four specific uh, water tiles and two crowns, that would be eight points. But they have to place a giant on one of those crowns and it would only give them four points at the end of the game instead. So giants can be pretty devastating if you're not careful. The last thing you would do to determine points value is you're going to score the additional markers here. Did I complete my 5x5 five five or 7x7? Seven seven? If so, I get 5 extra points. And then for every wasteland tile adjacent to the middle wild tile will score me an additional 5 points as well. And use this little handy dandy rule book or marker here to, to describe each player and then how many points they got for each of the different tile types uh, for whether or not they got it for the uh, two unique objectives. Add them all together and then that is the winner of the game, King Dom. Domino. So I'm ready to review the game, but one other little thing I need to mention is when you gather a tile and perhaps you can't play it because it doesn't match anywhere and there's no adjacent middle space or space that connects to the wild that you start with. Like for instance, this player here were to gather this tile here, which is woods, and there's no wood tiles around here. You have to discard the tile and you simply lose that action slash turn. So it's very devastating. You need to be careful when you choose tiles to make sure that you can at least connect them with one other adjacent similar tile space. Base. And in this case, it's, it's hard because you don't have any of these tiles and there's two of the forests. Well, King Domino and the expansion, let's talk about it. First of all, extremely high quality game. This is a family game. This is a kid's game. This is a tile placement game. It's competitive. There is not a huge amount of like aggressive plays against each other. However, there is, of course, selecting tiles other players want and, of course, utilizing them to your benefit as opposed to theirs. With the expansion, the Age of Giants, you're going to be taking these giant meeples here and placing them onto your board or giving them to another player to place onto theirs, reducing the amount of points. It kind of brings a small take that aspect or variant to the game. Playing with a 5x5 five five grid or a 7x7, seven seven, I prefer the 7x7 seven seven because it makes the game last a little longer and the point scoring is a little higher. And of course, there's some other unique variants as well to the game that you can add if you're playing with people who are a little more mature and less kids at the table. But this game has a nice wide range of age um, ranges that you can kind of add 
extra little variants and whatnot too. Of course, including the expansion will make it a little bit more complex, but for the most part, it pretty much remains the same. It gives you additional points, it gives you some additional tiles to place and move giants, and it gives you this beautiful tower here. This is probably my favorite aspect of the expansion because you'll be pulling tiles from the bottom here as opposed to from the box, and then you can organize them pretty simply, and then you can go ahead and flip them over. Uh, I, I really, really enjoyed this specific portion of the expansion. It's probably what would make me think that you should probably get both if you're going to think about getting King Domino, just because this thing is so nice. It's kind of, a, it just, it adds a little bit of flair to the game, and it makes things easier when it comes to pulling tiles so that people can't see the numbers and or the backsides of the tiles and pulling them out of the box, because you're supposed to do that in the base game, but it presents a little bit of a challenge. A nice little aspect, too, is adding this little score sheet here here, being able to write down all the scores down so you don't have to try and memorize them. It's not a very extensive like mathematical game, but when you're playing with little kids, it's good to kind of explain how the scoring works to make it easier for them to understand what they did right and what they did wrong and how they can improve. There's a little bit of luck involved in the game based on what tiles come out. For the most part, it's based on what you did the previous turn that will determine how well you do on the next turn, because if you select the two best tiles on your turn, provided that you can because you get to go first, then the next round you're not going to get the best tiles that you may, may may or may not want. It really just depends on the players and what they select. Uh, going around and placing down your kingdom is a lot of fun. It's very simple as far as placement goes, and you can see your points increasing as you place them down. Your kingdom kind of uh, it creates this like biome uh, locations, and as you can see, like there's you've got blue areas over here, and then you've got the uh, two green areas. And you kind of want to create larger areas or larger fields with biomes to score additional points. But remember, if you don't have any crowns on an area, you won't get anything. So you have to make sure that you net at least one crown in a full biome, because if you have 10 spaces with water but no crown there, that's zero points. However, with one crown, that's 10, and with two, that's 20, which makes a huge difference. And players will attempt to stop you from getting that if they see that you have no crowns in that biome. So be aware of that when you're placing down. Uh, this game is cute. It's got a ton of great artwork. It's very simple and easy to play. This is a game that's going to work easily with eight, nine-year-old kids, and maybe even a couple smarter kids kids who are a little bit younger and have already probably played a few other little games here. It's a nice tra you know, transitional game from games like the Haba series of games for younger kids. And you can move them to these games here. And it's also fun for adults because there's a ton of strategy in this game. This game has won a ton of awards. It has done very well. It has made a ton of money. And it's easy to see why. A ton of fun even with playing with just adults. And then of course with the expansion it comes all the unique additional little features and functions that are not too complex but add little something to the game, a little more aggressive aspects, and of course the tower, which I greatly, greatly enjoy. Overall, this game would get my seal of approval, or it does get my seal of approval, although I doubt it, need it needs it. It gets a ton of rewards. It's been very, very popularized over the last couple of years, and uh, with the expansion here, it is a definite must-gather if you enjoy King Domino. You can pick up one and then potentially the other, provided that you like a tile placement game. What I can say about some of the negatives, I suppose, is you might get unlucky with your choices, especially in a two-player game, because it's kind of a back and forth. With more players, the game is definitely more fun. I would, I would suggest playing this game with three and four players. I believe it's even made for four players as opposed to two. So that being said, two players, it's kind of a back and forth aspect where somebody's going to pick the last two and then get the first two, but last two and first two. There's some times where that changes, but the, the last tiles are always better than the first ones, but they present a problem with being able to select next on the next round. Um, I think the only other little thing is if you don't like a take that aspect in tile placement with the giants here, you might not want the expansion, but you might want to take it just for the little tower here that lets you pull the tiles from underneath it, and of course the additional victory points. It's kind of modular in the way like Moonshell is, my wife's game, where you can choose what to play with and what not to play with. You can take out the giants if you don't want to play with them, you can take out the additional victory points if you don't want to play with them, or you can add everything and it works out just as well. And all the rules simply are added together when playing this game. Uh, a very, very fun game, something I would definitely suggest to the younger, more gateway gamers, people that have families and kids who are just getting into gaming, or if you just started getting into gaming yourself and want a nice and simple tile placement game that's a little less complex than something like Carcassonne, this King Domino is 
definitely something I would suggest you take a look at. Overall, solid game, seal of approval for King Domino and the uh, Age of Giants, provided you don't mind a little bit of take that. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for these games here by Blue Orange Games. If you like them, there's a link down below in the description. We can go ahead and pick up the games. They are a lot of fun. Our live streams are every Sunday, 6.30 p.m. PST. You can go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Moonshell is now done and being manufactured. Uh, we will just be awaiting confirmation as some of the stuff is already done. I'll send pictures out on uh, Patreon and then of course right afterwards on Kickstarter to show you guys everything that's got going on for it and all the additional free features that we have included uh, to the game. And hopefully there's no problem with shipping. We'll have to see about that. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to uh, becoming a king in King Domino with you next time.